All right, hello for everybody and welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Vans USA Concord to Zoom Part 2. I am Mike Golick Jr., ESPN radio host, big time fan of Mercedes-Benz Vans. I'm coming to you live from Connecticut right now and we are thrilled to have you guys all join us today as we chat with some awesome folks all across the nation, hell, all across the world to catch up on obviously our favorite subject here, Mercedes-Benz Vans. Really excited about this one, a second chance to do this and a rare opportunity to get you know, up close and personal with some real fans of the Mercedes-Benz Vans in here. We have got an awesome group of people here with us in the chat right now. You can look around and see some of these faces already. Sharky Laguana with us, the CEO and founder of Bandigo, as well as member of the band Creeper Lagoon. Dan and Marlene, their uh, blog, Molly Mish, going to talk us through some of the van life there, raising their family on the road. Kristen Bohr from Barefoot Theory, another person helping people take the step into van living. Pro basketball star Thaddeus Young, race car driver and entrepreneur James Kirkham. Obviously, if you're like me, you're a big fan of dogs. And this chat is a very pro-dog chat right now. Henry and Finn, a human and dog duo traveling across the country, helping out animal rescues everywhere. Jackass's very own Wee Man joining us here. Another, as you will see, dog-friendly member of the chat. And pro cyclist Barry Nobles all here as a part of celebrating this. And we know because of COVID-19 this year, so many of the things that have gone on, we haven't been able to do big events like this in person, but we're delighted to be able to do this in a socially, socially distanced fashion, bring everybody together and talk about this. Uh, personally, for me, my own team and I here at ESPN Radio, we've been able to work with Mercedes-Benz Vans over the last couple of years. They've been so gracious with both their time and helping us provide an actual van to the local chapter of the Salvation Army here in Bristol, helping the great work that they're doing, especially around the holidays. That partnership's meant so much to us, so many people here locally, and, and has just been fantastic. And that's the spirit of what this is all about, people helping other people, giving back, and, and finding a way to live in a lot of these cases with Mercedes-Benz vans, providing the backdrop, the sleeping quarters, and everything else. So this is going to be fun. We're going to keep it fun and conversational here. We've got all our great panelists here as a part of this. We have all of their vans, as you're seeing right now in the background, all of these great stories that we want to touch on here. And so first and foremost, I, I think I'd like to start off with uh, Sharky Laguana, as we mentioned, uh, talking about Sharky. Sharky was a Band, a band member of the band uh, Creeper Lagoon, a guitarist, a songwriter, someone who worked out of bands there and is now the CEO and founder of Bandigo. So Sharky, I, I guess for you right now, we were talking about so many of the vans that you've got in tow before, but uh, what brought you here taking vans from a mode of transportation to something that you now make your living with? Yeah, well, uh, I used to, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I used to be a professional musician, major label. We had a video on MTV and, you know, a big moment in The Sopranos. Uh, and, uh, you know, the band broke up. And so I got a new band together. Uh, we went on tour. The second day of the tour in Elko, Nevada, the van broke down and we were stuck there for 10 days. Uh, and I thought, man, somebody has got to do a better job for the music industry and, and start a van rental company that can actually cater to uh, touring musicians. Uh, and that led to me starting this company. Uh, and, you know, we, we had uh, two vans parked in front of my basement apartment here in San Francisco. And then uh, 17 years later, I, I don't know, we have about 600 vans in uh, locations all over the U.S. You mentioned you're going to show us around a little bit. You've got the full camera crew here with us. So why don't you give yeah. us a little walk around of what you guys are working with here with the band? Yeah, well, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we, we mainly work with touring musicians, hence the name Bandigo. Um, obviously, in uh, the coronavirus environment, we're, <laughs> we don't have a whole lot of touring uh, musicians right now. So we're hoping that comes back. But your uh, typical band will put all their equipment back here. Uh, and that'll uh, host uh, 95, 98% of the touring musicians out there are able to fit their stuff back there. Sometimes they got to uh, pull a trailer. So we have a, a tow hitch on there. Uh, bands really uh, like it because, uh, you know, I've been doing this now since uh, uh, they first came out in 2002. So what, we're at 18, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2004, I think was the first printer. So we're, we're 16 years into it. Uh, and uh, I have yet to have anybody successfully steal any equipment out of the back of the band. Many have tried, uh, but it's very secure back there. Uh, inside the van, 
Uh, we have uh, comfort seating, uh, it reclines. Uh, this van's been on a couple tours, so it's, it's a little worn, but uh, we put the uh, video screen and we, and we got the uh, uh, Xbox going. Uh, well, in this case, it's a PS4. Uh, and uh, we were trying to get NBA going for you, but it uh, looks like somebody scratched the disc. Uh, and uh, we also, you can't tell because it's uh, nighttime or it's daytime, but in the night we have mood lighting in here. So it, it, uh, naturally we went for green. We thought the musicians would appreciate that color the most. Incredible stuff and incredible way to take your former career and turn it into what you're doing now through the, the beauty of those vans. Sharky, really appreciate the time and insight. Incredible looking van and an incredible operation that you've got set up there. And, and it actually segues perfectly because you mentioned families using this and Dan and Marlene who we're getting ready to go and talk to next. Coming to us all the way from Croatia here, we have gone international for Mercedes-Benz van and, and Dan, I'm curious because we heard Sharky talk about it there. Sometimes they have families using it. You guys, since, I mean, for almost, what, 12 years now, have been on the road using a van as your home. What got you in the van and on the road to raise your family? Uh, well, you know, we, um, unlike a lot of people who travel the way we do full time, they feel like they have to do it before they have kids. But we kind of just, I guess we did it the wrong way. We started doing it <laughs> when we started having kids because the whole motivation was to take our, we only had one kid at the time. She was, she's this one. She's big now. She's 13, but she was less than a year old when we started. And we wanted to show her the world. So, you know, it was kind of one place led to another. We went out on the road and we just fell in love with it. And this is the lifestyle we decided we wanted to have. So we've traveled through 49 U.S. states. So until we ship our van to Hawaii, we, you know, we're missing that one. <laughs> but we've been to all of North America, all the provinces in Canada, most states in Mexico. And then three years ago, we shipped over to Europe. And since then, we've been to uh, 29 countries in Europe, uh, actually 27 countries in Europe, and then we went to Asia via Turkey, and then also we just came back from Morocco, um, actually during the pandemic. So it was a, it was a bit of an adventure when we were there back in March. I can imagine well, an adventure, and for everyone that's been able to follow along, Molly Mish is your guys' blog where you guys post and talk about your adventure through all this. And you mentioned you start off on this journey 12 years ago, and you've got one child in tow now three kids that we saw getting to stay up probably a little past their bedtime, which I am always a fan of. Uh, Marlene, I'm curious, as you've gone through this on the road and you guys are homeschooling your kids in this van, what are some of the challenges that you've had to overcome and the ways that you've gone about doing that so successfully? Uh, we have to get creative with our space because there's three kids all learning different things at different grade levels. Um, but as we, we do something called road school, so we're not just sitting in the van every day with workbooks and textbooks in our hand, uh, we're exploring the area we're in. So if we're in Athens, Greece, we're exploring the Parthenon together as a family. If we're in uh, Morocco, we were learning about camels together. So we bring in our travel as, our, as part of our uh, homeschool experience. I mean, what a cool way to what a cool way to learn and go through life. I'm curious. You guys mentioned all over North America and now in Europe, you've getting, gotten to see so many different places. I'm sure everyone's got their own favorite, but maybe as a family, do you guys have one place that's especially near and dear to you? I mean, that is probably one of the hardest questions <laughs> to answer because, you know, before you go out on a chain, you know, before you begin a lifestyle like this, you have these ideas of what you want to see. You want to see Yellowstone. You want to see the Grand Canyon. You want to see, you know, Alaska and we went to all these places. But and what we realize it's like, like you, we want to be everywhere at all, every place at the same time. And all those places are amazing. But obviously, you know, we have a lot of the favorite places we have now are different than the ones that we had when we started. So, you know, what we realize is that there's not one perfect place. There are just thousands of perfect places all over the world. But, you know, we've, we've talked to our kids about this a lot. So they have sort of their own favorites. And that changes, too. Maybe they can help answer some of this. Luca, what's your favorite? 
My favorite was the hail of desert where we wore camels in Morocco. Mila, Mila. <laughs> Let Mila say her own. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mila. She's 10. My favorite place was Baja, and I like swimming at the beaches. Yeah, Baja was one of my favorites, too. My favorite is when we hiked in Hope, Alaska and picked blueberries. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, that's going to change probably next week when we go to a different place. <laughs> Dan, Marlene, all the kids, thank you guys so much for, uh, for spending time with us and sharing your van. And, and I, I think that's a really interesting segue. They're not being at the start when you guys were getting going a roadmap for all this. Because as we get ready to talk to Kristen right now and, and what she's been doing with Barefoot Theory, Kristen, it feels like that's exactly what your charge has been to try and get people ready for that. And so, and I thought a really cool part of your guys' mission statement talked about getting people outside responsibly. What does that last part mean to you, especially doing all this in a way that's responsible for people involved? Hey, uh, it's nice to see everybody. My name's Kristen and like you said, I'm in the blog Barefoot Theory. Um, yeah, we focus a lot on responsible travel. I think as more and more people are getting outside, it's just super important that people understand the principles of leave no trace and how to minimize our impact as travelers. So, um, you know, these places remain nice for future uh, generations. That's Charlie the adventure dog. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. <laughs> um, yeah, so my blog, we focus on helping people plan and prepare for their adventures. Um, and we also have a huge section on the blog uh, called the Van Life Roadmap, which is funny you use that word, but um, the Van Life Roadmap, we created a 50 lesson online course. It's completely free that walks people through the entire process of choosing the right van for van life, for their lifestyle, to converting it and getting them on the road um, and never looking back really. So that's the, go the goal of the course. And, and it's an incredible asset to so many people that are now seeing this on social media and thinking, oh, this might be for me. And, and I'm sure as people get excited and run into that, there's a bunch of things that they maybe don't consider in the process. So as you coach people and walk people through this, what are some of the things that you find people might not consider as they're getting ready to go into the van life that you guys can really help with? Sure. I mean, I think the, the first step is really evaluating your priorities. So like, what do you want to use the van for? So um, this, this is actually my second sprinter. The first one I had was a 144 inch sprinter, which is the short wheel base. We had a full indoor bathroom with a shower in it and a bed that was a convertible bed. So we had to pull, make the bed every day. And in hindsight, that wasn't really a good fit for our lifestyle. We wanted to be able to store mountain bikes in the van. Like we weren't using the indoor shower ever. I think I probably used it two or three times in two years of owning the van. And, um, I think if I had someone kind of coaching me through how to evaluate my priorities before I got that van, I probably would have ended up something closer to the van that I have now. So this is a 170 inch four by four sprinter. It was built by Outside Van, their company based in Portland. And they focus on off grid, solar powered, um, dirt road ready adventure vans. And so we built this van with the thought in mind that we want to get as far off the grid as possible. We wanted it to be like super durable, really beefy, but at the same time, allow me to work full time from the inside. So we spend about eight, eight months a year living in this. Um, we're actually home now in Utah. We're getting ready to take off next week. This year has been a little bit different with COVID, but back to your question, I think it's just really important for people to kind of go through the process of like really figuring out what they're going to use the van for before they decide, you know, the layout and all that, because people think, Oh, I need an indoor shower. And they get on the road and, you know, maybe they find out they don't actually need that. So kind of going through that process first, I think is really important to making sure you end up with something you want, that you really like. A, a ton of incredible information, the van life roadmap, which, Anyone that's looking to learn, live, and get outdoors in their van definitely would do well to check out. Barefoot Theory is the blog. Uh, Kristen, can't thank you enough. This is an incredible look at your guys' van. Thank you for uh, introducing us all to the Adventure Dog. I believe the first dog to officially enter the chat as a speaking role. So, very good dog. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. And if people ever have questions, they can contact me through my website. 
absolutely a, a great bit of information, tons available there from Kristen. And, and the different things everybody uses their van for is always an interesting way to look at this. And I think it's a very interesting way to talk to our next guest, Thaddeus Young, professional basketball star. Thad, how are you, man? And I have to say, when I think pro basketball star, I don't immediately think sprinter van. So what got you here? <laughs> what brought you to your first sprinter van? Uh, COVID, actually. Uh, I was in COVID, uh, and I wanted to travel safe for my family, and I just made sure I, as, uh, I was as safe as possible. So I went on and got me a van, and I and, uh, seen a lot of guys getting them. Uh, I consulted with uh, one of my good friends, Penny Hardaway, who's a coach at University of Memphis. He has one he uses for his uh, coaching recruiting trips, and uh, he told me it's the best thing ever. So he hooked me up with these guys at uh, Sterling Custom Coach, and uh, they built me one, they upfit me one, and and they gave me a, a, a really, really unique van, and I'm, I'm very happy about it. I was going to say, unique. We got to see a little bit of it before, and we've seen everyone's got different uses from your van. Yours is definitely built for maximum comfort. So when you went in, what were the things that you all wanted in there as you're talking to Penny, getting ready to go? What did you want to make sure you had going on in there? Uh, I just wanted to make sure I had something that was very safe, uh, that we didn't have to stop as much on the road, uh, something that was uh, upfitted with uh, – and luxury, I call it the private jet on, on, on wheels. And it, it really seems like that uh, we have TVs, uh, the kids are actually sitting in there right now and uh, looking at the, uh, the, the actual uh, TVs and the PlayStation right now. So, you know, I, uh, like, I'm just happy and excited that we, we, we were able to get one the way we wanted it. Oh, I mean, we got to do it. Can we go crash the party with the kids right now and see them play? Oh, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna turn this camera around and, and we can go <laughs> on and crash this party. So, so. We got we got our uh, our G wagon in the back. Also, my my wife she calls it Melvin <laughs> uh, after, after her grandfather. But this is our Mercedes Benz Sprinter van. Uh, it's a four x four, twenty five hundred. Uh, we got the wheel, the XD series wheels on it. Uh, they really did a really good job. My guys from Sterling Custom Coach, as I said, they do a really good job of putting it together. And we're gonna crash the party on the kids a little bit right now. So, as you can see, we got the logo in the seats, my, my foundation logo, Young For You. We got four captain chairs. We got a passenger driver's side, obviously. And then we have my kids sitting back here in the back <laughs> playing the video game. <laughs> sitting here, they, it's, it's hard to get them up out of here. So they're in here playing the video game, but we got LED lighting. We got the TV up front. Um, you know, it, it's just a, it's like I said, it's a, a, a private jet on wheels. If you wanted to do some work, we can pull out, we can pull out the, the tray tables. We got all the different buttons for the lights. We got uh, USB cords, everything. So, but that's not the coolest part of the van. The coolest part uh -oh. of the van, the coolest part of the van is, I would probably say, is the back part which you probably think I'm crazy because I'm saying the back part of the van, but I think this is the coolest part of the van. So we have a toilet seat. <laughs> so we don't have to get out. We got the door right here. We got a toilet seat. We have a sink. We got an air fryer and we have a microwave up here with the refrigerator and a little storage under the bottom. So I think that's the coolest part of my van because we don't have to actually stop on the road. We can actually do everything inside of the van and make sure that we don't have to stop and deal with this COVID madness that's going on right here, right now. But I, I would have to that, agree. That, that's pretty much my van. Well, the start of a long love affair with vans and Thad Young. Thaddeus, we appreciate the time, man. Make sure the kids aren't creating characters in 2K to dunk on you or anything like that. We don't want them going after dad like that. And I'm a big fan of the air fryer as a guy that eats very often. And I, I do feel like a kindred, this is kind of like the transition of all the things that I'm involved in, covering guys like Thaddeus as a part of sports and then content creation. And James Kirkham who's up next with us. James, I think I appreciated your bio on social media as much as anybody. I drive race cars and I create. And I think that's a great succinct way to look at all this and, and everything you're about. And so uh, I'm curious on this. You're the co-founder of Race Service and Donut Media. You do a lot going from track to track. 
and trying to create videos on all of these different cars. So how have Mercedes-Benz vans kind of helped you in that content creation process? Yeah, so we started a, a, a media company basically to, to keep chasing our dream of racing cars. Um, and and uh, the vans have been integral parts of the teams. So we have uh, a variety of different uses for each of them. Uh, we have the Sprinter and then the Metris. And the Metris is light and nimble. It's used for get, going around town, around the shop. Um, the Sprinter is, is big and powerful. It can tow race cars. We can fill it full of people. We can fill it full of craft services. You name it, we use it for it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I think the, the Sprinter is actually taking the lead for my choice of, uh, of, of favorite daily drivers, I think. It, it's like, it turns really, everybody thinks it's really big and it's hard to drive. It's like the easiest thing to drive and gets around town super easy. You can back it into parking spots super quick. Uh, yeah, it's easily at the top of the list, so. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, like as someone who's gotten to drive one before, I think people are always shocked. It moves really well. And so as you're going from track to track doing all this, what are the kind of things that you're hauling back there, the kind of stuff that you've got to make sure not only gets there, like you said, in a smooth ride, but gets there safe in one piece so you guys can do your thing? Right, so I'll just kind of describe a typical weekend for us. So um, again, we, we started race service to, to keep racing cars. Um, it, it stickers on the sides of race cars weren't working anymore. So we started making content about 15 years ago. And, um, and so, yeah, we're a media company focused at the millennial audience. Um, and recently, uh, most recently I'd say was the Hypercar Invitational is, is an event we just did with the vans. So we are the media partners for it. It was an event up at Laguna Seca uh, Northern California. So we're in Los Angeles. Um, we loaded up the, the sprinter full. We had a bed, we had all the things you need for the weekend at the track. So you had spare tires, spare parts, uh, jacks, jack stands, all the things that you need to maintain, uh, this piece, AMG GTR, which we use for high speed, uh, camera car. So we, at, we put cameras on it and at speed, uh, chase, chase crazy cars. So we were out, out up there chasing, like the craziest multi-million dollar cars in the world getting like this insane footage right on their tail. Um, and so this would be loaded up on the trailer right behind the Sprinter. The Sprinter pulls nicely, um, almost as nice as it drives without the trailer. Uh, the, uh, and then the Metris is kind of our, our nimble, um, it, it's used for moving people around um, at the track, but, we'll, but to get to the track, we fill it full of cameras first. So um, we, we pack it full of all, it's basically our little mini camera department. Um, and, and that's kind of the favorite one for everybody to drive around the shop as well around town. Um, but, uh, it, it, we've even recently developed a harnessing system. Um, back in the day, we used to just throw people on the hood of a car and tell them to hold on and get the shot. But now we have a harness system where, uh, we can open the back doors, um, or the side and harness our shooter in there with a, with a steady, steady rig. And, and he, he, we can get really, really beautifully slow speed footage of the cars. And then this thing comes in for the five fast stuff so man you built for speed built for power built for everything and yeah. in the van for you guys there that's a, a, incredible incredible to see the coordination involved with all that james really appreciate you giving us a look at the whole garage here and the process that goes into creating all this thanks man yeah thank you for having me so we go from high speed chases to man's best friend now as we are joined by henry and finn they are as Instagram famous as any man and dog friend that you will see. Your guys' journey across the country. I'm, I'm interested. So this started off, you were actually, is my understanding, driving to California, getting ready to uh, drop Finn off where he was going to be adopted. And then along the way, something changed and you got there. And now this relationship with the two of you on the road together is born. Kind of walk me through that. Yeah, that's right. So basically, um, I was traveling for about six months by myself and I, went to help my brother with a, uh, with a rescue project that involved Finn driving him across the country. And uh, the family that was supposed to adopt him backed out about halfway through the trip. And so during that trip, um, my job was just to, you know, take care of Finn, make sure that he um, stayed alive for the, <laughs> for the duration of the trip. Um, so I basically got to test drive him before, uh, and he turned out to be a great road dog, you know? And, uh, and so when they backed out, I just decided I was going to keep him. And then um, when we announced that I was keeping him, uh, his Instagram just blew up uh, in, in, in a very, very much a viral way. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, now I'm a full time, I, you know, I support myself entirely through Instagram. And, uh, you know, it's, it's changed my life. It's given me purpose. Now, 
you know, we, we've added a whole rescue component to, uh, to the traveling and the work that we do. Yeah, and walk me through that because that's an incredible part of this is you guys took your relationship and decided you wanted to help other dogs out, other animals out in the process. So going around the country, you're also finding local animal rescues and, and how are you guys giving back to them? Yeah, so basically every month um, as we're traveling the country, we raise uh, money through an online platform called Patreon. Uh, and we donate all of it, 100% of that money to local rescues as we're traveling the country. So right now our monthly donation is over $12,000. Uh, and so this, this, this month right now is actually our one month anniversary of when we started the project. And we've raised over $100,000 this year to help local rescues. And really it's just like a great way for us to uh, give back to the communities that we're traveling through but also, you know, help more dogs get adopted, you know, help, help more people like me find dogs like Finn, right. And change their life. Right. And, and really what's amazing about it is that like, before I was doing this, I was completely by myself on the road and that kind of lifestyle just isn't very sustainable. Right. Just like solo dude traveling in a van. But as soon as you add a dog to it, as soon as you start adding purpose to the traveling that you're doing, um, it all of a sudden becomes a sustainable way of living right it's like i could do this for the next five years if i wanted to because i'm really i really am helping you know these local communities and 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 that's what really feels good and helps me sleep at night can you go up well and and purpose is such an incredible word for all this and clearly everyone here so much purpose involved in what everyone's doing and and to get to share it with man's best friend and all this i'm curious we've talked about everyone's favorite part of their van but what's Finn's favorite part of the van? What is it? What is, what does your dog enjoy most about the van life? Uh, well, Finn's never peed in the same place more than once, so it's really just like the overall outdoor adventure. And neither have I actually. Now that if we're on the time, <laughs> uh, I don't. I'm like you know, Thaddeus has got this big bathroom in his van. I have. I don't even have a bathroom. Okay, I don't even have a shower. Um, this is our van right here. This is the bed that we got going on. You're going for that, that nice, open, airy feel. And I'll show you uh, Finn's favorite, or at least a custom. I converted this whole thing myself, by the way. Um, and then this right here in the front is a, it's a custom dog bed. So obviously that's the driver's seat. And then Finn sits up front with me. And this is just a, a DIY. Uh, this is just a coat hanger that I flipped around, right? So it just hangs on the dashboard piece of wood boom storage underneath so it's uh it's got you know finn has been full-time in the van uh he's you know he's spent about 90 percent of his life in this van so it's uh you know it's what he knows it's what he loves and, and clearly clearly he loves you as well in that process we all love finn i think i can say that officially for everyone in the chat at this point head over heels and now following both of you on Instagram. So, yes. Henry, thanks for bringing us in here. The van, like you said, built it all out yourself. Looks incredible. Appreciate the time and appreciate you guys showing us around the uh, the van crib in here. Hey, hey, thanks for having us. Really, really excited to be here. Uh, and yeah, go, go follow us uh, at Keeping Finn, at Keeping Finn on Instagram. At Keeping Finn. Plenty of room for activities in there and plenty of activity <laughs> I've seen on the chat from Wee Man down here. So Wee Man, I have watched you get in a full dynamic warm up in right now below the canopy. So how are we feeling, man? You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I was just getting a little workout in, waiting for you guys. But it was pretty interesting listening to everybody and the different stories in their vans. I want to say hi to everybody in the whole Zoom call. What's up? <laughs> so yeah, no, it's been fun. Definitely. And we've been looking forward to chatting with you. I know everyone's been getting to share their story here. And so uh, kind of tell us how you came to this. Obviously, a lot of people familiar with you from your days going around with everyone in the crew and jackass and going around, obviously, skateboarding a big part of your life. So where did Vans fit into all that for you? Uh, so in 2018, I sold my house out of the blue and didn't know what to do and was living in a hotel for two months. And I started thinking like, what the hell am I gonna do? I didn't wanna buy then because the market was high. So I started researching vans and I found Sprinter to be the one I love and all the different things that came with the Sprinter. And I just thought this thing is something I could get into. 
And one big thing that really sold me on it was this guy took uh, one of the sprinters on a four by four track, a uh, track that like Jeeps and trucks go on. And he actually called Mercedes and said, hey, I'm going to take your sprinter on this four by four track and see what it could do. And he took it on the beginner, intermediate and expert track and just killed them all. And the best thing I saw was on the expert track, there was a full 180 degree turn and he took the sprinter, no problem, 180. Everybody else had to take it at a three point turn. And that was the selling point on me. That's incredible. So you've been going all <laughs> over the place. Clearly you found out the van ready to go up for anything, up for every turn and challenge or track. And so I'm curious, as you've gone about it and gone all over the place on the road, what's your routine been like in here? You've clearly got a great setup in there. Have you kind of fallen into a rhythm now that you're in the van life fully after selling your house? Yeah, uh, I did it for a year. I'm back in a place now, but I did the van life for one year exactly from 20, uh, November 1st of 2018 to October of 2019. So I did a whole year, traveled the country, stayed at different campsites, stayed at like Flying J gas stations, did showers like where truckers would, would find uh, like Korean spas to do showers there. And as I did it, like the first van I had had everything. And I realized I didn't need all the bells and whistles. I didn't need the shower. I didn't need the toilet because I hated draining it. So I kind of cut back on everything I need. And I had that first van for eight months. And in the meantime, I started designing my next van, which is the van I have right now behind me. And uh, I started designing it in the meantime, and I went straight to RB and told them exactly what I wanted. And I went back and got it in July, which was back when I first went to go see them for a van. They said I wouldn't have a van until July. And that's when I picked up this van. And this van, I'll rotate my camera. This van is the Trooper. So uh, I, I called it the Trooper. And it has everything I wanted. I wanted it to be able to be campable with an awning outside, hang out. I love the shade. I wanted it also because my first van had it. I'm going to go up here real quick. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. So I wanted it to have a roof deck. And I wanted to be able to come up, hang out up here, bring up my sleeping bag, sleep up here on the outside. But I also wanted it very earthly. I got my solar panels that run my AC and all the stuff on the inside, like my USB plugs and my normal electric plugs. But I wanted it so, you know, you can be up on top and see the world wherever you're at. I can pull up to concerts and not get hounded by the fans and just be like, oh, I can't get down. I'm up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I wanted to show up everywhere in my van and skate. So I had them build a custom skate rack for me. I got my golf clubs ready to go at any time. A couple cooking supplies, coffee machine in there. That's my Yeti over there for the cold meat and different things like that. But one of the main things I always wanted was a big bed because my last one was the couch was a bed. And it was just me by myself sleeping like, you know, in just the lay down back position. And I got fully over that. So I was like, I want a big comfy bed. And the way I set it up too was so on this side, you can pull up, park anywhere and have a view out here and see something good. But you could also see out the back door so you can back up to a nice ocean view or whatever like that and see that so yeah big comfy bed and i go for comfort so i go cushiony extra pillow top super comfy blanket <laughs> so yeah oh and then you got to have the captain chairs that rotate 180 degrees both of them so you can have coffee in the front, breakfast, and look out and see the world, all directions. So. Incredible. Yeah. Every, every view and experience covered in there. <laughs> yes. You got to experience awesome. life. And if you're going to do it, you might as well do it in comfort.
Absolutely. Doing it in the comfort of a Mercedes-Benz van, no less <laughs> in that. We meant incredible setup, incredible tour. Getting on the roof is always an adventure, and getting to do it live is even more fun. Thanks, brother. We appreciate it. <laughs> you got it. Thank you for having me. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs> So we got up on the roof and went all terrain with Wee Man. So it feels like appropriate now to finish with Barry. Barry Nobles, pro cyclist with us here inside his van, also dog friendly in this one. And, and Barry, we just saw Wee Man built for comfort here. Yours built pretty practically as well, I'd imagine, given the equipment you got to lug and what you've been putting, the kind of mileage you've been putting into it. Yeah, Zach, what's up, everybody? Good to be here. Um, Yeah, you know, watching Wee Man's van, I'm like, holy cow, like, Every, I mean, seeing everybody, especially going last in this, I'm seeing everybody's van and just so many ideas for my own and then so many things like, man, I wish I could afford a bathroom in mine. But, um, yeah, seeing, uh, seeing Wee Man's, I have the same wheelbase, the same low roof, and uh, his is set up very similar to mine. And, uh, yeah, like you said, very practical, kind of to the point. It's not for – it's just enough for um, – camping and going to race events and being able to function out of out of this van i can kind of step away between race laps and just kind of be in my own little nest so let me flip this camera around so yeah here we go we got uh the back seat area i have you know we may have a little table here mine is set this way he had his sideways which that's actually how i used to have mine but i actually have a baby girl on the way so i didn't even have this back seat so after the whole van i put put this floor in and everything was literally built for camping with my wife and i and bicycles and i had to remount the seat because we're gonna have a baby seat in uh, probably less than a month right there so that's exciting so my little dude opie will have him a little sister on the way so uh he's getting used to the van life he's only 10 weeks old so um he's new to it but yeah we got uh everything i tried to utilize being the short wheelbase short roof we only have so much uh room so we literally had to make make room with everything every little gap we have so i have race gear we have helmets we have camping gear everything needed there right there is the stove and, uh, yeah, I'll give you the outside tour of it. We're out here at my personal training compound. I have all my jumps. These are for uh, – this is my freestyle side of the yard. I have a racetrack on that side of the yard. And uh, it's growing. I moved from southern – I moved out, out of Southern California to move back to the south in Alabama to have something like this because you can't afford that much land as, uh, as much anymore. So, yeah. We got a GLK 350 as my wife's vehicle. And then back here is where all the bikes go. So being the short roof, there's very little room for uh, sleeping up top. It is just enough room literally to roll over and let my shoulders buzz the roof. Because I had to have the height for my, wheel, my bikes, I didn't want to have to take wheels off. I just want to slide them in and go. Plenty of room. <laughs> Got the tool. What's up, dude? Enough room for the Opie to walk through. Found his way out the back. And uh, let me turn around. Yeah. So that's my setup. Very simple. And uh, everything was done. Uh, it's trying to DIY every little project, make it as, as cheap build as possible. Um, I also race Harley uh, flat tracks on the side. So when I need to put my Harley in here, the bed actually, it's not even bolted in. Everything's like slotted in so it pops right out and uh, everything can be removed with uh, one person, no extra, no extra hand. So, which makes things easier when I'm on the road and have a pregnant wife. So she can't live too much right now. I was going to say it's the perfect blend of, of family in there. Was, was it all ready to go? Did your wife demand any real major changes when you guys got, when she got, I say you guys got pregnant when she got pregnant in yeah. all of this and knew that the baby was going to be on the way. Did she have any uh, explicit demands in this one to make sure it was going to be kid ready? No, not really. Honestly, uh, I've been very excited to be a father since uh, my younger days. Man, I've always looked forward to this day. So to have my first on the way, um, I was very proactive about it. I was getting – it just gave me a reason to pretty much give the van a, a whole facelift uh, on the inside. So 
being based around bikes. I don't plan to slow down anytime as far as riding. So I want to take the family along to all the events. So I'm like, well, gives me a reason for a facelift. We can put a baby seat in the back there. I can still fit all my bikes and um, hopefully have room for her a bike when she gets older. There we go. A growing family that bikes together is in good shape inside this van. Barry, first off, congratulations. Best of luck as you uh, become a father here to you and your wife. Very exciting stuff. And thanks for showing us around. A lot of room to grow in that thing. And we look forward to watching you add more smaller bikes uh, as she goes along here. So congrats, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who was a part of this today. Really an incredible panel. Uh, everyone sharing their story. And as you see, a lot of ideas being generated inside of this chat right now and with everything going on. Uh, all of our panelists for taking some great time out with us here, sharing their Mercedes-Benz vans with us. And to say thanks on behalf of all of our panelists here today, Mercedes-Benz Vans is making a donation in the name of each panelist to the American Red Cross to continue to help out with all of the work that they've been doing during COVID-19 as a part of that relief to make life better for everybody else. So uh, a big thanks from Mercedes-Benz Vans and to our panelists in that way. Really cool. And the American Red Cross will definitely benefit from that. For everyone that was watching here, thank you so much. For everyone at Mercedes-Benz Vans, again, getting to be a part of this event, the Mercedes-Benz Vans USA Concord to Zoom Part 2, I'm sure Part 3 is not far away. Thank you for letting me be a small part of this and, and allowing you all to tell your stories to everyone. Thanks to Mercedes-Benz Vans, and we will see everybody soon. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great rest of your week.